I come from a very intense painting background. You know, I was a very serious, dogmatic, old school expressionist figure painter. Cezanne, Goya, Vermeer, Velasquez, those were the gods. These are the people I worship. These are my friends. These are the women I sleep with, damn it. You know, this is it. Ever since the 80s, I'd also done um, sort of appropriated video montage work. I had one of the first Sony Betamax top loaders, cost about $2,000, weighed about 2,000 pounds. You know, um, so as soon as those things were available commercially, I was like playing around with video. So I've been doing that forever. I quit painting. I stopped painting a while back just to sort of uh, to completely focus on the, on the video. So that's what I've been doing. Repurposing found footage. I was always a little weird. But there were these things coming through the TV and it was the same time as like MTV. So there was this wonderful sort of new generation of imagery and types of imagery that was coming through the television. And the idea that, that I could sort of possess it was, was, was huge to me. I like to think of them as found objects. So I can't go out specifically hunting for a specific thing. I have to find stuff and then find a purpose for it once I find it. When I approach them like a painting, you know, letting the, the, the medium and the material and the moment determine the content, determine what I do with it. Whereas an illustrator, you know, has an idea and they, and they illustrate it. Um, to me, a painter gets involved with the material and, and their, their moments in time, and then something comes out of that. I remember getting a, a, a year's unemployment at one point, and I um, spent the year trying to capture the black space in between TV commercials. So, which was insane at that point. At that point, I only, only had like um, uh, only had one VCR. So, you know, you would be on record, record and pause, watching the Montel show, and then you go, okay, they're going to go to commercial. They're going to go to commercial. I think it's going to be. And you listen to his voice, and you go now, because when you hit record on it, the VCR is going to take three or four seconds before it actually starts recording. So you got to hit it in advance of them actually cutting. So you go, record. And you go, oh, God, I missed it. You know, and then you got to rewind. You, won't get, you don't rewind in time for it before it goes to the commercial, and you got to do it to set it up for the next commercial. I did that for like a year, trying to get that black space in between, the, in between you know, going to commercial or in between commercials or anything like that. And <clears throat> I never really got much of it, but what I got was tons of this beginning and ends of things. So that, uh, they, th that started becoming really powerful to me. I've always been sort of obsessed with TV. It was my glass nipple, you know, as a babysitter when I was a kid. When I started uh, in the, the bar world, I, I realized, oh, these things would work great in a bar. So I started playing them in a bar. Give yourself up. You will not be harmed if you give yourself up at once. Surrender yourself or you will be destroyed. <laughs> The jealousy of a she-devil frees the bloodthirsty killer slaves. Follow me, soldiers of revenge. I'll lead you to food, to freedom! 